All right, guys, it's seven o'clock. We've got John Curry here. Um, we've got everybody joining. Um, so John, I'll turn it over to you to give a brief opening statement and then uh, we'll open it up for questions. If you guys wanna use the raise hand tool, we'll get to all of you guys. So John, I'll let you take it away. Thank you, Will. I appreciate all of you uh, making uh, uh, plans to be able to join us at such short notice. Um, and I also want to mention uh, our women's golf team did a wonderful job uh, today. And I'm sorry that I'm making uh, this unfortunate announcement on a day uh, with such a great moment by our women's golf program and Coach Llewellyn. Um, we did uh, uh, earlier this morning, uh, Lindsey Babcock and I met with Coach Hoover um, and discussed the program and decided uh, that we would make a change uh, and move forward. Um, I've determined that this is the right time. Our number one priority is to provide a world-class student athletes uh, experience and given the overall trajectory of the program, staff departures, et cetera, um, I felt like this was the right time for us to make a change. Coach Hoover's a lifelong demon deacon and I'm deeply grateful to her, her husband, John, and their daughter, Maggie, for their dedication to our university community and our women's bas basketball student athletes over the past decade. No one loves Wake Forest more than Jen Hoover and no one's worked harder um, to build a program than she has. Uh, obviously, she's also one of our greatest players in our history, um, and she holds the distinction of uh, uh, being in both of our women's basketball in, in NCAA appearances uh, as a player and then also as a coach. Uh, this is a program where I believe that we have uh, the ability to be very successful and compete for ACC championships. We're a top 30 university, We've got the Atlantic Coast Conference and the city of Winston-Salem, which are an unrivaled combination. If we look at the Shaw Basketball Complex, the David Budd Gymnasium, the soon to be completed Dr. Carol Guth Women's Basketball Clubhouse, we've got the very best on-campus facilities in the country. Um, so we will uh, begin our search uh, for a new coach immediately. Um, as we do with all searches, we'll proceed with great expediency, but we will work hard to do a great job and be thorough and the next time after today uh, that I comment on it will be when we introduce our next coach. So with that, I will stop and take your questions. John Dell, you want to start? Yeah, um, John, I was just uh, curious. I know in the past couple of years or, or maybe three years ago, and there were a couple of uh, players that were unhappy with Jen on her exit interviews, and there was maybe some sort of looking at that, did that have anything to do with this, um, you know, making your decision now? Well, John, I would never comment about, you know, specific um, uh, items or rumors or whatever. I mean, the bottom line is we, we did a holistic review of, of our program. Um, Coach Uber loves her players and loves the team and loves uh, Wake Forest. Um, there were a number of different factors where I just felt like this was the right time for new leadership um, in the program. Connor, go ahead. John, I know it's your policy to do year-end reviews and their season ended, uh, I think about two months ago. Um, was was this the ending of the of the review or was, was that review conducted and then this is something else that came up in the last couple of weeks? Well, first of all, I wanna be very clear. Um, Coach Hoover is a great leader and a great person. Um, and has worked really hard uh, for Wake Forest. And there's no, there's no issue of any propriety or anything like that. So don't even, don't even think uh, to go in that direction. Really, the, uh, the conversations that we've had over the last month um, about the program, and then the fact that we've had um, really a complete turnover in our coaching staff um, was, uh, was, is part of what leads us to, to this point today. Um, you know, no one... Uh, you know, sometimes you hear people say that, you know, hey, we should fire this person or fire that person like it's sport, right? These are really painful decisions to make uh, that cause pain for families and transitions. And uh, certainly I did not want to be in this position, but ultimately my responsibility is to student athletes. Part of being uh, part of a world-class student athlete experience is competing uh, and having a chance to win uh, and win championships. And it just became apparent to me that the, 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 um, the, we needed a new strategy and a new direction uh, to do that. Aaron, go ahead. Hey, John, uh, obviously it's not a program that has been to the NCAA tournament a bunch of times, and you just talked about competing for ACC championships. I'm sure that's a piece of the overall trajectory you're talking about. 
sort of what is your vision on that front as far as the national level, the national piece of this? Sure. Well, Aaron, you know, you make a really good point. It's really hard to win ACC championships. It's the best conference in the country, uh, comprehensive conference in the country. And uh, whether it's basketball or golf or football or whatever, it's hard to win ACC championships. Um, and but in terms of um, our progression, uh, one of my old mentors used to say, you're, you're either competing for it or you're biting on the butt of the guy who is. Right. And so moving our program forward. Um, with a better pattern or sustained, sustained success. Obviously, this year we were four, four and 18, excuse me, four and 14 in the league. Um, we were able to get into the NIT after with a losing record overall after um, uh, West Virginia backed out at the last minute. And I was proud of our team for, for winning that first round game. Uh, but ultimately, um, the pattern and, and the infrastructure for sustained success from a team stamp, from a leadership standpoint, I just didn't see it and felt like we needed new leadership in that regard. Mike, go ahead. Thanks. Hey, John. Uh, you talk about the winning ACC championships and, and that sort of thing. A little bit closer to home in a micro view, did the neighborhood getting a little bit tougher with NC State and their success and Duke on the rise and Carolina going to the tournament? Did, did that factor into it as well? Because, I mean, you, you want to be maybe the, the biggest house and the best house on the block before you can start looking around the rest of the country. Well, Mike, overall, we've had, uh, you know, pockets of success here and there, but not sustained success. And, you know, the first responsibility is, is to be the very best Wake Forest we can be, regardless of what somebody else is doing down, down the street. And uh, from, from that perspective, um, I, I think it's reasonable for Wake Forest to have a, have a um, expectation that we, that we compete uh, in our league and in our state. In fact, we have a chart that we keep. Um, with our staff, Will does a great job of putting it together where we chart big four victories um, in all of our sports and we got an aggregate total on that. So we do care about, um, about who wins. Uh, winning isn't the only thing, you know, academic success, uh, progression towards degree, building great careers. Um, and none of those things were issues uh, for, for Jen, uh, Jen Hoover. You know, we have great student athletes in our program. I met with those student athletes earlier uh, this evening. Um, I'll be on the phone later on with, uh, with our recruits and then following back up with all of our student athletes. Uh, they care deeply about uh, the basketball program at Wake Forest. They want to be successful. Lauren, go ahead. Hey, John, thanks for taking the time on this topic. Um, I saw in the release, Coach Hoover said she was disappointed to be fired without cause. What can you share about her feelings in that conversation and how that went? Well, I, I would respect the privacy of that conversation. I think uh, Coach Hoover's comment in the in the quote um, um, spoke. She was she she said in her quote she was disappointed, um, and uh, I respect that. I'm not surprised by that because she's a competitor. And any competitor would be disappointed with this uh, with this decision. So, I respect her greatly and um, appreciate all that she has poured in uh, to Wake Forest. Les, go ahead. Hey, good good evening, John. Um, in terms of the next coach for the Wake Forest women's basketball program, what kind of resume? will speak to you when you start to look through the, the particular candidates. What does the next coach kind of look like? What, what attributes do you hope that they will bring? Well, uh, Les, we're going to hire the very best coach and the very best person to lead, uh, to lead our program. We have extraordinary women in our women's basketball program, and they deserve that. Um, certainly we'll – um, you know, we have there's there's minimum standards of character and integrity at the highest level uh, and those sorts of things. But we certainly um, we know uh, this day and age that, that leadership, um, the ability to uh, formulate a plan of attack and, and strategy uh, to develop a winning program are, are paramount. And uh, I'm confident that we'll we'll have lots of people that want to be uh, the coach at Wake Forest. And, and as I said, in 2019, when we made a change in the, or 2020, excuse me, when we make, we make, made a change in the men's program, uh, the challenge won't be finding people who are interested. It will be choosing among a lot of great candidates uh, for the right person to lead the Demon Deacons. John Dow, go ahead. Yeah, John, um, uh, piggybacking off Connor's question from earlier, I know three assistants had left Jen's staff. Was that, was that a big, 
this uh, factor in the decision as you kind of, you know, we're looking at the program overall? Well, you know, stability is important in any sport. Um, and, and sometimes there's really good reasons and people are leaving, uh, leaving a program. Um, but we have had, um, you know, pretty consistent um, turnover uh, in our program. And, and that does affect, um, that does affect the, the, the sustainability and the trajectory of the program. Mike, go ahead. John, it, you know, you touched on this being a, a difficult day. Just from your standpoint, this is the worst part of the job for you. I mean, having to make a decision like this and and having to move on from someone who's given so much to the school as a player and a coach. Yes, Mike, it is. And uh, it, well, I, I say there's two things. One is when you have to tell a student athlete they can't be there anymore, um, because that's when usually they realize that what they what they've lost. Um, but certainly making the decision, whether it's a coach or another staff member is, is incredibly painful. And, um, you know, the day it doesn't hurt to do it uh, will be the day that I don't need to be in this job anymore. Aaron, go ahead. Yeah, John, the spring meetings are going on. Uh, so I, it seemed kind of an unusual dynamic. I mean, Coach Hoover was there, too, and you got with you now, right? Um, I met with Coach Hoover after uh, her portion of the meetings had concluded. Uh, is there any, I mean, it seems kind of an awkward situation to bring a coach down south to the meetings and then make the decision there. I mean, can you, I know you're saying the decision you had, you made it when you had to make it, but can you elaborate, can you explain a little bit about how that part came about? Um, well, Aaron, I understand the context of the question. The reality, there's, a, there's never a good time. And, um, and once a decision has been made, um, the right thing to do for all the people involved is, is to go ahead and, and, and move forward with that decision. Um, my number one priority was that, that we tell her in a way that enabled her to, to share the news with, with her family uh, and then enabled us to speak with our team um, and, then, and then move forward. Um, so there, there's never a good time. Um, and, uh, you know, certainly, um, uh, you know, if we could have a different way to have a different time, we'd have a different time. But it, but it was what it was, and this was the appropriate uh, and best way. Les, go ahead. John, is there any concern from the timing perspective that, uh, you know, making this move on, you know, May the 11th might put Wake Forest at a competitive disadvantage in terms of finding that right candidate and also in terms of uh, recruiting student athletes, not only to stay at Wake Forest, but also to, to come to Wake Forest as freshmen? I think those are good questions, Les. Uh, you know, again, it's kind of like the earlier question. There's never a great time. Um, uh, in, in many respects, um, uh, the sea is a little calmer uh, right now than it would be, you know, mid-March, late March. Um, so I, I don't believe that that's going to negatively affect uh, our situation. Um, the, this, the aspect of our student athletes, um, you know, our student athletes have all finished the semester uh, successful academically. And this is a great bunch of, of young women. Um, most of them are coming back uh, in a few weeks. Um, for, uh, for, for uh, summer school classes and to start their off-season programs. And so that's part of the timing is now is we, we've got a period of time to, to move on in a search and have a new leader for, for our squad. Um, we've spoken with, uh, like I said earlier, we had a, a Zoom call uh, earlier with our student athletes, so they heard it all from us. You know, our student athletes care about Coach Hoover. Um, they know she cares about them. Um, uh, and our student athletes also are, are desirous of winning. And their, their um, I would say our, our conversation was, was, was a good conversation. And we'll be in touch with our student athletes as we go through this process uh, to make sure that they have good input. Um, and we look forward to, to bringing a great uh, coach to Wake Forest. Uh, I, I would credit Coach Hoover with bringing uh, great young women into our program because that's a great bunch. Um, and I'm, I'm uh, very confident that we will uh, be able to move forward with that team. John, go ahead. Yeah, uh, John, just ultimately wins and losses. How much did that play into this when you talked about the, you know, the whole decision you had to make? Uh, wins and losses matter. Uh, we do keep score. Um, at the same time, um, you know, I believe that, that Wake Forest over the last 10 years has steadily increased its investment in women's basketball. And we have a very, very significant investment in women's basketball. Um, so, um, you know, I would never point to a specific record or a specific loss. It's more of an aggregate 
um, body of work, so to speak. And then ultimately, uh, some of the things we talked about earlier in terms of um, stability in the program and, and forward uh, progression. Connor. John, to revisit something you just mentioned, and I'm not trying to contradict or, or be a, a smart aleck here, but uh, how many of the players do you know are coming back in a couple of weeks? I think I've, I've heard that the May 1st deadline to enter the transfer portal and use that one time eligibility gets extended to July 1st. If there's a coaching change, maybe you could confirm that for me. Yeah, I mean, the, first of all, our, the the transfer portal, there's an exemption um, for the for a coaching change where so if any of our student athletes wanted to go into the transfer portal, um, they can do that and they can be eligible somewhere else uh, immediately. So that's that's certainly um, uh, we're certainly aware of that. Uh, at the same time, this is a world class opportunity at Wake Forest. We've got incredible facilities. We've got a top 30 um, nationally ranked university. Uh, we play in the best conference in the country. We live in a great city. Uh, so I, I, I believe our student athletes uh, see those advantages uh, at the same time, you know, as they have the opportunity to meet our new staff, uh, they'll be able to make the decisions that they should be able to make. If it's not for them, uh, then we'll wish them well and support them as they go on to their next stop. Lauren. Uh, so obviously this is change number one for the program. What changes in your mind need to happen from here for the program to ascend in the ACC and nationally, like you mentioned? Well, certainly we have a, um, you know, we have a lot of attributes and, and a lot of advantages and opportunities at the same time. It's an incredibly um, and challenging conference. Um, and, uh, you know, finding a leader who can maximize our advantages um, to take us to success is our priority. Anything else for John Curry, guys? Awesome. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you all again for taking the time this evening. Um, and uh, let us know if you have any uh, questions. And uh, in the meantime, uh, uh, reach out to me if you need anything. Thanks. Well, uh, actually, while we have John here, can we ask about a, a, a non women's basketball related topic? Just thought I'd shoot my shot here. Sure. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I saw some news. The ACC is considering that three, five, five scheduling model. What are your thoughts on that? And, and if that were to come through, what do you envision that would be like for Wake? Well, I, I would say, generally speaking, we've had a great meeting uh, and Coach uh, uh, Commissioner um, Phillips has uh, really elevated the level of conversation and transparency in the meetings. Uh, including the time with our football coaches. You know, Dave Clawson is the chair of the football coaches and does an extraordinary job, as you would expect, of organizing uh, those sessions. Um, I would look at three different things as it relates to, to the ACC football schedule. Um, one is, you know, maximizing the opportunities to have great matchups. Uh, two is making sure that our fans see and actually two is making sure our student athletes in the course of a four or five year career at Wake Forest have the opportunity to play everybody in the league. And that does not exist right now in the current format. And the third thing would be our fans. And certainly I always want to put our fans first, but I got to put our student athletes before our fans. Um, but our student athletes come before our fans, right? But they're, it's a close 1A and 1B. Um, the, uh, our fans being able to see um, different teams in the league on a regular basis. And so I think those are all advantages um, you know, we don't play uh, under the current schedule format. You know, Wake Forest and North Carolina have one of the very oldest rivalries in college football. And, and under the format currently, we only play twice every 12 years. You know, fortunately, Ron and Bubba scheduled an extra series for us, but um, that's not right. So there's an opportunity um, in assessing the models uh, to rectify uh, things like that. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Anything else for John, guys? All right, please don't hesitate to reach out to Will if you have follow-up questions or need more information. Uh, and again, I appreciate you all being on this call tonight. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, everybody.